So I'm just doing some voltage checks now on the actual transistors themselves. So I've done just about everything else, I've recapped it and that sort of thing, and it's still playing up. So now I'm tracking down natural voltages because it does actually have some voltages shown in the diagrams here. So I've checked these transistors here so far. That's this group just there. That will check out okay, apart from the last one here, which is measuring 9.3 volts, or rather negative 9.3 volts. It says negative 9.8 here. The rest were basically right. There is no voltage reading on this path here. Doesn't give you a voltage there, so I don't know whether that's right or not, but I was getting 0.8 volts there. Sorry, minus 0.8 volts. So up to that point, it seems kind of right. You know, slight variation here, not a lot. Half a volt went at one spot. So now I'm going to come over to this side to check the other side of the demodulator. We'll hook up right now to this transistor here, Q604, which is this one right here. I'm getting an interesting reading on this one. So I'm going to do a full power up from cold. You can see how the meter reacts to that power up. In fact, I might even hook up a second meter, only two, two meters at once to see two test points at the same time, because I'm measuring on the base and on the emitter of that particular transistor. What I'm seeing on the base would tend to indicate that the fault is before this point. So we'll see. I'll hook up another meter so I can see both at once and we'll do it again. So the Brymon BM235 here is on the base of that transistor. Fleet 175 is on the emitter of that transistor. So I'm going to do a power up from cold and watch the meter, watch these meters, and we'll see what we get. We'll see what correlates with the scales. So what I should be seeing here, I'll tell you what you should be looking for actually, so you know what I'm talking about. The base should be at one tenth scale minus 0.15 volts. Full scale should be one volt, right? And on the emitter, it should be minus 0.75 volts for one tenth scale and minus 1.6 volts for full scale. So we're getting about 0.6 scale here. So that'll give us a clue. Power up from cold. So it overshoots, it comes back down again. So it's almost full scale, that kind of correlated. This correlated. Zero, zero scale is looking pretty good. All right. So it's sitting at 0.2 there. And it comes up, as it comes up, you see above voltage is rising as you would expect. So half scale is 0.5 volts. Now don't forget full scale on a base is 1 volt so this voltage here, this base of this transistor correlates to the meter reading which means after that point it's working correctly before that point there's a problem. I think I've nailed it down a little bit but also it doesn't matter which range you're on here it's completely relevant because the ranging is before this point so it doesn't matter what you're on on this dial Makes no difference if you've got this like shunted. I've got a 50 ohm shunt across here. This is relative to these. And you can see these do agree with what this meter's doing. So the problem is before the base of this transistor. Right, so here's a circuit diagram which I kind of showed you before. So there's that transistor where we're measuring this voltage here, which is excessive, right there. Now this is the one which I said is about half a volt higher than it should be. Now does that half a volt correlate to the half a volt here? I think it does. You know, maybe that half a volt extra here is what's causing the extra half a volt here. So maybe this being overdriven a bit is the issue, being a bit higher voltage. What's causing that? I don't know yet. So that 0.67 there was correct. That one is suiting 9.3, sorry, negative 9.3. The only thing between this point and this point is this photo chopper, which I think is probably working correctly. Probably, I don't know for sure. I mean, it is obviously functioning to some degree because it is getting meter readings but it's just got that low level which is always there. So I think the actual choppers themselves are probably working but I'm thinking the problem is in this section here somewhere. I checked these voltages here, DC values, they matched perfectly, it's 0.13. In fact I've got point, sorry I should say negative, negative 0.13 and negative 0.45. I've got negative 0.459 so very slightly higher. I was actually quite surprised that it was close as the iron the manual. I was actually really surprised at that good. This one here was measuring negative 0.3, that was correct. And let's say this one here is measuring negative 0.8, which I don't know whether that's correct or not. I can't tell you because there's no marking, but probably right. But the only thing I've seen discrepancy of right now is this one here, minus 9.8. So maybe it's something here, maybe there's an issue with this particular transistor, because that voltage there is correct. So a bit of gate is turning on too hard, driving this transistor a bit harder. Could be this one, it could be this one. I need to find out what those are, Q602, Q603, let me look those up. So this is the one which suits that diagram, this particular parts list for this particular board, because I have different versions of the board, you have to be careful, make sure you reference and equip boards. Q601 to Q603, it's a 
530036 apparently. I'm not sure if that's actually what's marked on them, but that's what's here. NSA 2N3906. Standard PNP part. However, the parts in here are metal case. The standard 2N3906 is not a metal case, it's a plastic case. So, uh, interesting. Slight difference there. But this is a common part, I've got loads of these. I could just swap those out with modern equivalents. You know, the modern parts. Let's pull this board out again and check these part numbers on here because I don't think that's what it says. So here you can see this is an 1850-0062, both of those parts. So it's not actually what is listed here in the parts list, which is interesting. So even the more modern parts list for the newer version of the board lists the same parts. All right, 2N2906. So that's curious. So what I'm basically suspecting now is that this is a really old version. And although this diagram here in the back here is the correct diagram for this board, it's got a slight different part designation, and these transistors got upgraded to a different point um, to the 2N3906s. I'm going to look up these parts, see what they actually are on a cross reference, and see if I can find these in the reference. I've got a few cross references stored on my computer, so I'll, I'll look one up and see if I can find these parts in that cross reference and find out what that says these are. So these parts here come back to being a 2N404A. So we can find out a data sheet for those things. Find out what they are. You have to excuse the screen row, it's just more convenient right now. It's a 2N404, as I said. It's a germanium PMP transistor. Germanium? Hmm. I'm not sure if I can chuck a silicon in its place or not. I wonder what the effect would be from doing that. So obviously it could be this transistor which is bad, or one of these. Maybe I was getting that 0.8 volts here. So maybe the drive from this transistor is slightly higher. I don't think I've got minus 0.46 here. So this one's slightly higher, which could be causing this one to turn on slightly more which could then be causing this one to turn on slightly more. It's possible it's, it's that 0 0.01 volt discrepancy just here which is causing the problem. Don't know. But all these resistors here I've already replaced. So I know it's not a resistor problem. The voltages at the emitter here was correct. This one's a ground, so it doesn't matter. It's already fine. That one also checked OK. So it's not one of these diodes here which have failed. So it kind of is looking like it's a transistor. So I've measured there, which is a minus 3.5 volt at that junction. I could measure that and see if that looks like it's right or not. It's interesting, definitely curious. I mean, you've got a 7.15 volt rail here, so it's going to be around that number, maybe slightly different anyway. It may not be exactly that. But if I see something close to that, it should be about right, I think. It's just like it's very slightly off and then maybe being amplified up. Now, the later version of these balls actually have an extra transistor in here, which is like a buffer. And the output voltage from that transistor is noted as being 9.4 volts. So, does my 9.3 actually matter? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, it could be this modulator is bad. It could be that it's a bit weak on one side, so one side switching on more than the other. So it's not pulling it down, pulling down the average. So this one pulls it up, this one pulls it down. So maybe this one's a bit weak and it's not actually pulling it down like it should. That's possible. The only thing I can see is that this voltage is half a volt up and so is the output voltage half a volt up. So I think this switching here is probably not the problem. It could be, but... Yeah, just wondering if I should just play with the circuitry here a little bit. Maybe replace this with a silicon and see what happens. See if it'll work with a silicon transistor and see if that'll do the job. I mean, it may do, but yeah. Hmm. The other thing I was considering is this capacitor here. You've got C604, which is a 0.1 microfarad cap ceramic. This one right here. It's a big ceramic cap. Maybe if that's leaking a little bit because it's going to ground, it could actually put in this voltage to that 9.3 volts, it could be pulling it down or up, depending on how you want to perceive it but, because that's a negative rail, so I suppose you're pulling it up already, aren't you? So it could be pulling up to that 0 volt rail which we could be pulling it up to that 9.3 I'm seeing so that capacitor is a suspect but like I said, I replaced all resistors, so those are all good right? I already know they're okay, I already even measured them before I put them in so I know the resistors are definitely good so that's a suspect but otherwise it could well be one of these genuine transistors are uh, misbehaving a little bit, it's possible so I stuck this on my capacitance meter here and it's measuring 0 0.09 microfarad with a ESI of about 260 ohms. Here's a brand new cap, much smaller, similar sort of ratings, 50 volt rated. And this is 93 nanofarad, so 0 0.09 again, but 655 ohms, it's got a higher ESR. So I might just drop this one in, see if it changes anything. Capacitor is installed, let's power it up, see what happens. See if it behaves differently. If it doesn't change anything, then it's likely one of transistors. Because I've already replaced the resistors, as I said. 
I mean, it'll come to like one tenth scale as normal on these things. But coming right up to here is not normal. That looks pretty much the same. Not the capacitor. So I might put the original one back in again, just to keep it original as possible. Because, I don't know, I don't think it's got a real problem on it. I think it's okay. So, it's probably a transistor. Mm. So I've now replaced Q603 with a 2N3906 PMP transistor. Obviously it's silicon versus germanium. I'm not quite sure what it's going to do to it. Maybe much worse, maybe it will fix it. I've got no idea, I'm just guessing here. So let's power it up and see what happens. I've got this hooked up to the base voltage again. And we'll see what this does. Yeah, it's coming up. I thought I had a boat hooked up to the base voltage. Maybe I've got it in one place. Oh, I should be clear to on that one. Sorry, I've got it in one place. I think of the other transistor. But yeah, that's no different. But it's still working. So I will start I was thinking of the other transistor I was looking on. The other output side. So that's that 9.3 volts I was getting before, minus 9.3. So it's still reading low. Let's go back and do the one before that. I've now replaced Q602. Let's try this again. See if it's any different. Looks the same. That looks the same. Not that then. So as it wasn't either of those two transistors, I'm going to put the original two back in again because they're probably fine. If anything, it's actually got looks like it's got slightly more deflection than I had before. Yeah, those two transistors are probably fine. What if it's Q601? Right, so I've now put the original transistors back in again. I've swapped out Q601, which is a different transistor. This is a uh, 1850-0060. I'll put in a 2N3906 as well. Let's give it a go. The voltage is higher. Now see to see if this needle comes up. Should be any second now if it does. Here we go. But that's with the higher voltage. We'll see if it comes up to the same level. So that's basically behaving the same even with this high voltage here. So that voltage there may not be so critical because obviously now it's more like what it should be in spec. Circuit diagram there shows it's minus 9.8 volts. We get in minus 9.7. That matches basically and the needle's still up here. So that voltage correction didn't fix this problem. Which means it is most likely the chopper. That's a shame. And just to be sure, I've just get to the multimeter from this in case maybe it's inducing noise into the circuit. Just to rule that out. And we'll see if it uh, comes up again. And it does. So it's not the multimeter introducing noise. This is on the zero volt rail, so that shouldn't matter at all. I basically think now I've ruled out everything apart from the chopper itself. And that basically means the end of that board. But this isn't the end of the unit. I've designed a replacement board for this one. It's already on its way to me from PCB Way. It's already on the plane. When that arrives, I'm going to build up a replacement board. So hopefully replace this chopper board. And we'll hopefully get this thing working again fingers crossed. So one thing to take from that is that it does appear that we can actually replace these germaniums with silicons at least to not make the fault any worse. It may be that you can actually just put these in and it'll work just fine as they are. That's a nice thing to know if you've got one of these and you need to replace these. It looks like they'll probably be okay. So watch out for the next part where I build the new board and test it. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed, click the bell icon to get notifications and I don't know how many parts this is, probably already you know, two or three part video already, I'm not quite sure what it's going to edit out to but uh, There'll be another part where I make the new board and install it and see if it works.
Well, I hope so.